This is Feed the Factory, a modded questing mod pack that is a little bit different to a lot of the other modded questing mod packs out there in that we start in a completely flat world, although we do still have some trees growing, we still have some plants down, and we still have the regular Minecraft mob spawning. Uh, apart from the fact that we also don't have any hostile mobs, we are on completely peaceful mode, and it is always daytime. The reason for that is that this mod pack is heavily focused on automation, and it does it in what I think is a pretty cool way. So in the quest book, which you can get to by clicking quests in your inventory, or you can go into the settings and set a key binding, which is what I've done so I can open it without going through the inventory, we have a click me quest. It says quantum research is perfectly safe. They said nothing could possibly go wrong. Oh, how wrong they were. Now I'm stuck in this weird blocky world and I need to find a way to get back. Luckily, I was smart enough to pack some tools, especially my auto science kit. Now to figure out how to get out of here. Research. You might have noticed that you don't have access to everything that you should at the beginning. You'll have to research them first. You do so by trading research items for the ability to use a particular feature. To get research, you need to insert items and power into a researcher machine. So essentially, the way this pack works is we have all of these quest lines on the left. This quest line that we're currently in is the main quest line that's going to house all of our main quests as we progress. And all of these other quest lines are research quest lines. And it's basically like having five tiers of shops that we can use to unlock different things in the pack. For example, under transfer here, we can unlock minecarts, we can unlock item pipes, item conduits, we can unlock uh, better and higher voltage versions of these energy cables here to move more power around. We can unlock different abilities in terms of uh, moving fluids around as well. And as you go down, these things get more expensive in terms of research, but they also get much better and allow us to expand out our factory even further, which I think is pretty cool. To start out with, we start out with two tools here, those being the advanced ore scanner and the seismic reader. These are pretty nifty because again, unlike in regular Minecraft, we don't have to spend all of our time mining. So the way this works is the advanced ore scanner, if you right click it, will tell you how many of a given resource are in the chunk that you are in. If you press F3 and G, we can show the chunk boundaries. And so this chunk right here has the diamond and redstone that we just saw in the top right. If I do it again, it still has the exact same amounts. And so this chunk contains 1,542 redstone as well as 148 diamonds. And if we move on to the next chunk here and we do the same thing again, this one contains a bunch of iron with some diamonds as well. So if we wanted to, we could go from chunk to chunk trying to figure out where different resources are, but if we're looking for a specific resource, that is where the seismic reader comes into play. Right here, this takes a little bit longer to load in the map around us, but once it's fully loaded, we can then go ahead and place in, for example, iron ore, and all of these areas in white are the chunks that have iron ore in them. And so if there's something specific that we're after, we can use this to get a vague idea of where that resource is relative to where we currently are. Uh, for example, coal is something that we're definitely going to want to get fairly early on here. And it looks like we don't have any honors at the moment, but uh, we do have some fairly close by. Now, the tricky part here is correlating this to where we currently are. The minimap might make that a little bit more useful. I'm actually not quite sure. I assume that the map faces north, like this map in here. I don't think it changes its orientation depending on where we are. So I think that if we go in this direction, we're gonna find some coal. And once we have a resource that we actually want to get, that is when these guys right here, the burner drill components come into play. So let me quickly check, do you have any coal? It totally does, perfect. Iron and coal is a good starting area for us. And so all we need to do now is take these burner drills that we start with. And if you place down eight of these in a two by two by two cube, we get a burner drill. And in here, we can place one of our iron drill heads, like so, and we can place in some fuel. Now, I'm not gonna use the coal that we have here. Instead, I am gonna go ahead and chop down one of these trees over here. We did very graciously start with a diamond pickaxe, diamond axe, and diamond shovel, and it looks like we have some kind of tree capitating mod installed as well, because the whole tree comes down all at once, which I love to see. And so 
if we just grab a couple of these, we should be able to uh, craft those into planks, which we can of course use as fuel in our burner. And that's going to start to slowly but surely produce iron and coal because those are the resources in this area. And it will keep going until it either runs out of fuel or until it runs out of resources. Because again, each of the chunks only have a, a finite amount of each resource in them. And so as we progress on through the pack, we are gonna have to go further and further afield to get those resources and also try and get more for each all that we get. So uh, let's do something like this. And we do have to set an output side. The way you do that is you just shift right click on the side you want to be an output. Right now we don't have a chest or anything. And so it's just going to output onto the ground. But as you can see right there, we got some iron ore. Nice. Now, if we wanted to, we could make a crafting table. There is a quest down here for the crafting station. And so we can also do something like this to craft that crafting table into a crafting station. The crafting station works in the exact same way as the crafting table, but it also has the added benefit of storing your items when you close the crafting table so they don't spew everywhere, which is very handy indeed. And then if we do something like this, get a regular old Minecraft chest, we can now place that next to the side that we designated as the output side. And now all of the resources generated by this burner drill are going to go directly into this chest, which is much tidier than before. So we can leave that going for the time being. The next quest down here says stone and cobblestone are important early on, but the only way to get them now is by digging it out of the ground. Uh, pickaxes are nice, but only break one block at a time. Hammers, on the other hand, can break a three by three area of blocks and would be perfect for stone collection. So out of the gate, what we can of course do is just dig straight down as we would in any other Minecraft world. And we should eventually hit some stone here. We do indeed. Once we get some cobblestone, the pack does graciously give us an iron hammer, an iron excavator, and 16 charcoal. So the iron hammer here, as the quest book suggested, is super useful in that we can use it to dig out a, a three by three area at once, which is going to make getting stone like this substantially easier. And then the excavator works in the exact same way, but instead of working like a pickaxe, it works like a shovel. So if we take the excavator, we can now dig out a three by three area of dirt or sand or clay or gravel or whatever it is all at once, which is uh, very nice indeed. And it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to, uh, to dig up the grass or to get ourselves a large amount of dirt going forward. Now, this is a big old quest here, which I believe is just telling us how to use the burner drill and the iron drill head, which we've already gone through. Regular furnace is, of course, easy enough for us to do. Boom, and boom, there we go. We did also get given the components to build a third drill as well, which is very nice indeed. It's gonna make it a lot faster for us to get certain resources. Speaking of which, we do have iron and coal coming in here, but we should probably also look to try and find some copper as well, because I think copper is gonna be the next resource that we're going to want after iron and coal. So. It looks like we are about here between the uh, birch forest and the kind of spruce forest. And so it looks like further up north, which is this way, is where the copper should be. So let's just quickly head on up this way and see if we can't find a spot for copper. And of course, hopefully, sooner rather than later, we're going to look at uh, setting up some kind of transportation to actually move all of this stuff back as well. So we'd have to keep running back and forth to all of these different burner drills. For now though, if we do something like this, we can get yet another burner drill down. We can throw it in the drill head. And ideally we would get a little bit more fuel here actually, because again, I don't want to use the coal or charcoal that we have. I'd prefer to use just regular planks where possible. I'd also prefer to get another chest down as well so that we don't have copper just spewing out all over the ground. So I will go ahead and make another crafting table here just because they're not particularly expensive. And I think it's gonna be quite useful to have these kind of dotted around as we move forward. And then we'll get yet another chest like so. We'll draw that down on the front just as soon as we shift right click to set the output. I'm sorry, my friend, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we might need some wool fairly soon. I'm not actually quite sure on that one, but uh, boom, there we go. That should start to get us some copper fairly quickly here. And the copper is gonna be useful because it's going to allow us, I believe, to make some of these conveyor belts, which again, are going to allow us to move things around fairly easily. But again, before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's head back to our little iron and coal drill. And let's see if we can't get that next quest completed, which just wants us to grab one iron ore. We currently have almost a stick, and then we just need to smelt that in one of our furnaces. So we'll go boom and boom. And there we go, one iron ingot completes the quest. We get a morphing tool, 
This is a pretty useful tool, but from my experience, it can be a little bit buggy and so I might not end up using it all that much. We do have two more informational quests here. Carry on is in the pack. That is very useful information. And this gold chest here is also very nice to see. This is just a very large regular chest. And for those unaware, the carry on mod allows you to walk up. And if you shift right click on a block, you can then pick it up and then place it down somewhere else. Very useful for chests in particular because they don't lose their inventory when you move them. So you can put something in, pick it up, move it, and it still has all of its inventory inside of it, which is uh, very nice indeed. I assume it will work with the multi-blocks, but it won't move the whole multi-block. It will just move one of the blocks, so probably not worth doing there. Over here, we have parallel processing. Splitting ores between multiple furnaces isn't that easy with the technology I have at the moment. My current options take up a good amount of space or time to set up. With some more research, I'll be able to access easier and better ways to parallelize processing. So that gives us access to routers and conveyors and minecarts. The minecarts, I think, are what I'm going to try and work towards because these are pretty nifty, especially when combined with the signal mod that we have installed as well. We are gonna have to do a little bit of research to get both minecarts and signals, but there is some pretty nifty stuff that we can do with minecarts, setting up kind of a train network for all of our ores and gems to have them all come back and be processed automatically. I think that's gonna be very cool for us to work towards. Further up here, we have a quest that gives us two buckets of water. Very nice indeed. That is going to allow us to get an unlimited source of water if we go ahead and do something like this. We can put one water source here and we can put the second water source like that. And then now we have unlimited water. I do believe this quest is repeatable. And so if you ever need more water, we can just click that and get it. Also, I guess if we ever needed more buckets, we could use that as well because we can of course take a water bucket and just empty it into our pool of water if we want to get just free buckets for crafting other items in the future. I'm not particularly sure that's gonna come in massively helpful. I think we're gonna get iron automated fairly quickly. And once we've done that, I don't think it's gonna be worth our time to individually uh, get and empty those iron buckets, but could be quite useful in the early game. So what else do we have here? We've got tiny coal as an option, which is very interesting. It makes our coal just that bit more efficient. So for example, when we're smelting ores here, we can uh, craft the coal into tiny coal. You get nine tiny coal per regular coal. And uh, if we just drop that in, it allows you to use one tiny coal per smelt here, which is just a bit more efficient and means you don't end up wasting a little bit of coal on uh, smelting like one iron ore and use a whole piece of coal for it, which is nice, although I don't think particularly useful for us, uh, especially given how easy it is for us to get large amounts of coal. The game very handily gives us all of the different kinds of samplings here. I think that's mostly just to uh, give us options in terms of base building. We can kind of choose which wood we're going to build with. I have a particular fondness for dark oak, and so we might end up using that, although I do quite like spruce in the right circumstance, so we'll see how that goes going forward. We do have the chisel mod installed, which is also going to make it just that little bit easier for us to set up a nice looking factory. For the chisel, we need some sticks as well as one iron ingot, boom and boom. That gets us a chisel, and with the chisel, we can begin chiseling things like cobblestone into all of these different cobblestone variants, and also things like marble into all of these different variants as well. I do like the way the marble looks, and I think that uh, a marble factory would look pretty nice indeed. And then finally at the top here, we have a recipe that gives us this calculator for free. This is the calculator from the crafting calculator mod, and it is really nifty. There are two modes to it. It starts in the crafting calculator mode, which we'll get to in just a second. But if you shift right click, it just becomes a regular calculator. You know, five times five is 25. You get the idea. But uh, back in crafting calculator mode, this is super nifty for large crafts as it allows you to very easily break down what you're going to need to craft that large craft. For example, if we look at the first tier of research, which is this one right here, logistics research. The logistics research, if we look at the recipe, is made either in a burner researcher or in an electric researcher. It's made with coal or charcoal, iron plates, and conveyor belts. So we'll start with the burner one for now because that's where we're going to have to start. I believe we're gonna use the burner researchers and then upgrade to the advanced researchers. But initially, what we can do is we can click the move items button here and then click save. And now if I drag this over to here from JEI or from our bookmark area, we can specify how many we want to make. Let's say we need 64, a full stack, to unlock a certain piece of research. We can see, quite obviously, that to do that, we need 64 conveyor belts, 64 iron plates, and 64 coal. That, in and of itself, is not too interesting, but you can take this 
one step further, if we look at the recipe for the conveyor belt, and again, we click move items on this, we can then click save. And now if I want to make 64 logistics research, you can see that it's broken down that conveyor into its required items, which is in this case, iron ingots and copper gears. We can go even further though, we can do the same for the copper gear, move items, save. Now we've basically taught the calculator that recipe as well. And finally, we can do the same thing with the iron plates here. We can teach it that crafting one iron plate with one engineer's hammer equals an iron plate, move items and save. And now we can see that in order to make the logistics researcher, we need 64 copper, 96 iron and 64 coal. The crafting calculator doesn't quite know that we don't need 64 engineer's hammers. These are reusable, but the idea here with the calculator is that it gives us a quick and easy way to find out how much of all of the base resources we need to make some kind of complex item. And especially as we move up to some of the higher tiers of research, which become very expensive and involve some very complex recipe chains, it's gonna be quite useful to have the ability to see kind of in basic terms, how much iron we need, how much copper we need, how much coal, steel, whatever it is we're going to need to make that specific item. So that's how the crafting calculator works. Pretty nifty stuff. So I believe here, if we want to move forward and get our first bit of basic research, the next quest that we actually need to complete is the alloying quest here. It says, using these materials I've refined, I can make modularium, a very useful material that is required for research machines. I need an alloy kiln for that, which is uh, eight kiln bricks placed in a two by two by two cube, and then right clicked with the engineer's hammer to form. The multi-block takes two inputs and burnable fuel. So modularium is made in the alloy kiln or in the arc furnace with iron and redstone. And in order to get the alloy kiln, we need some kiln brick. We need eight in total. This is made by crafting cobblestone with coke brick. And in this pack, coke brick is made by crafting cobblestone with regular stone. And so if we were to grab some of the coal that we have and maybe craft that down into some tiny coal, we can then do this and this, and we can begin smelting down some of the cobblestone that we mined earlier into regular stone. And then we can use that to craft the kiln brick. Up here, crushing sand, we can craft cobblestone with the engineer's hammer to make gravel. And then we can do the same to make sand. The engineer's hammer is fairly easy to make and is going to be a crucial part of the early game here. And uh, the way we make it is with two iron plates, which initially we can get by crafting three iron together. But once we have our first engineer's hammer, going forward, we can make iron plates more efficiently by crafting just one iron with one engineer's hammer. That does use some of the durability of the engineer's hammer, but it is a one-to-one -one as opposed to a three-to-two, which makes it substantially more efficient. So if we were to go ahead and craft the stone that we just smelted with the cobblestone, that gets us the coke brick. And once we've got a little bit of coke brick, we can then craft that together with some more cobblestone to get us some kiln brick. And I've made more than we need here because I think we are going to want to get quite a few of these down just to make the modularium that little bit faster. So if we do something like this, kind of the exact same setup as with the burner miner, we can then right click both of these with the engineer's hammer. And we now have two alloy kilns. In here, we can place some fuel. Again, it can be tiny coal like so along with iron and redstone. I don't want to use the only piece of redstone that we have because again, if we do that, although it is possible to find redstone just by running around with the ore scanner, it is definitely much easier for us to look for it with the seismic reader. Now we did start by having some redstone fairly nearby. And so I think just kind of over in this direction, we should be able to put down uh, for now our third and final burner drill. Although it looks like I might have put the burner drill components in the gold chest here. I did indeed. Let me grab those back out. And then I think just over here, kind of in front of this little area of trees, there should be some redstone. I have to go one more chunk over. Again, F3G to get that to show up. And it does take a little bit of time for the ore scanner here to regenerate its usability. But there we go. There is our redstone. Let's go ahead and put down eight more of these burner drill components, like so. Again, I'll make yet another crafting station here. It's not strictly necessary, but for the time being, if we're ever over here and want to do any crafting, like we're doing right now, it does make life that little bit easier. Shift right click to set an output, place down the chest, place in the drill, and place in some tiny coal. Nice, all right. So once we have a few pieces of redstone, we can start crafting that into modularium using our alloy kiln. 
And the reason we need that modularium is to make a machine casing. This is four modularium with one copper. That is where that copper from earlier starts to come in quite useful. So let's go and drop a little bit of redstone into one of these kilns here. Uh, the four redstone we have should get us exactly four modularium, which is exactly the amount that we need. We can make it, of course, a little bit faster by splitting this across the uh, the two different alloy kilns that we have. Again, we'll put some uh, tiny coal in there just to try and make it that little bit more efficient. And then uh, while we wait for that, we are going to want to go and grab some of the copper that we're generating over in our copper drill. Before I go though, I would like to take like a stack of tiny coal with me just so that I can make sure the copper drill keeps going while we're working on other stuff. Over here, we've got almost two stacks of copper, which you love to see. Again, I'll drop the stack of tiny coal in there just to keep that going. So we keep getting more and more copper. And then back over here, just like before, we're gonna drop that into our furnaces. Boom and boom. And that's gonna start smelting up the copper for the machine casing. Now, one thing we did start with actually that I've not mentioned is this starter cottage capsule. This pack uses these capsules quite a bit and they're very nifty, but uh, initially we do start with a starter cottage, which we can right click and we can place this down really wherever we like it. So if we right click like so, boom, it's just a fully functioning house that we get to start with. This has been deployed, so you can't deploy it again, but uh, there is a free chest here. There's also a free furnace here, which I will actually go ahead and take. And there's also a bed, which we don't necessarily need, but is there if for whatever reason we wanted to sleep. Back over here, we can just add this to our wall of furnaces, which for whatever reason didn't work. Let me try that again. There we go, fantastic. Back over here, we should have four modularium. We do indeed. Let's craft all four of those with one copper ingot. That gets us our first two blocks of machine casing. And from there, we can now look at getting this guy, the burner researcher. So this is made by crafting eight machine casing. So we are gonna have to do a fair bit more modularium creating because right now we've only got two of the eight required. However, if we once again run all the way back over to our redstone area, we should hopefully have at least a fairly decent amount of redstone here. We do indeed a half stack is gonna be more than enough for us. Let's get those into the alloy kilns with some iron and let's see if we can't get six more machine casing. While we wait for that modularium to smelt, I am gonna get yet more iron cooking in here. We've got quite a bit of iron ore ready to go because we can use both the copper that we have here and the iron to make some conveyor belts. So the conveyor belts do require a little bit more iron actually, and we do have some excess in here that's not gonna get used to make modularium. But uh, if we go down this way, we can make an item router and a splitting conveyor belt. The regular conveyor belt is quite useful. It's a copper gear, as we saw earlier, with two iron ingots. And so if we do something like this and then craft that with two iron ingots, like so, we get our first conveyor belt. And uh, this is gonna be quite useful or moving, for example, some of our redstone back over to here. So one thing that we can do is we can, I believe, just put down conveyor belts directly on the output side of the burner drill. And so if we use the carry-on mod to move this, I think that we can just do this and we can begin automatically moving the items back and then eventually they'll go into whatever chest they're connected to. And so what is gonna make our lives a little easier for the time being until we can get down to unlocking and using minecarts is kind of just running these conveyor belts from the uh, burner drills all the way over and back to kind of our centralized area so that we don't have to do quite so much running backwards and forwards if we ever need more redstone and copper, which we're definitely going to need in the not too distant future. Back over here though, we have 28 modularium, which is enough to get us the six remaining machine casing that we need. And so if we do something like this, we get the multi-block capsule base and now what we can do is we can craft that into a one-time use burner research capsule. And so this is kind of the game's way of letting us create multi-blocks without having to individually build every single multi-block. Because going forward, unlike with these alloy cons here where we do have to craft and build every multi-block individually, some of the bigger and more complex multi-blocks in the pack have their own capsules and we can just kind of mass craft these capsules and then use those capsules to deploy a lot of these machines, which is gonna make our lives a lot easier and it's gonna make it substantially easier to expand and build a massive factory. So in order to make this capsule, we need three iron sheet metal and two furnaces. The iron sheet metal here is just four iron plates. And so if we grab some more of our iron that's being smelted, we should be able to very easily 
get four iron plates. And four iron plates does get us four iron sheet metal. So that's actually all we need here. And then if we go and grab some cobblestone, we do have it in brick form, but if we chisel it, we can get it back into regular cobblestone form, which we can then use to make two more furnaces, at which point we should have everything we need to get the burner research capsule. And much like with the cottage that we put down a second ago, what we can now do is right click with this and then right click again to throw down the multi-block structure. This is the burner researcher. If we open this here, you'll see it says uh, blueprint found none. It should change uh, once we actually put an item in and you'll see it says structure found burner researcher. So what we can do now is we can actually make our first bits of research. So in order to do that, we need to go to the burner research attempt. We need to put in one conveyor belt, one iron, and then this one here is powered by coal or charcoal. So let's grab some iron. Let's craft up a another set of copper gears so that we can get yet another set of belts. There we go. And so now that we've got the belts, I think that's basically everything. We do need some iron plates, that's fine. But our one research is one belt, one plate and one charcoal. So let's make four plates because we've got four belts and then we'll go ahead and use four charcoal. Coal would also work. And so over here, we have these three tiny input ports. In one of them, we're gonna put the four iron. In the other, we're gonna put the four conveyor belts. And in the third one, we're going to put the four charcoal. It doesn't matter where you put those so long as you have all three in any three of these ports here. And you'll see in here that progress is being made. It is gonna slowly but surely produce for us one logistics research. And so that's the general premise here. And what we are now tasked with doing is automating this. We need to automate the extraction of our resources. We need to automate the fueling of these burner drills. So we need to set up a system that can take the coal and then send it to the burner drills to keep them running all the time. We need to set up an automated system for sending all of the iron, all of the copper, all of the uh, smeltable resources to our furnaces. And then of course, taking all of those and sending them where they need to go. We need to set up auto crafting to allow us to auto craft things like the conveyor belts here. And we need to automate the production of research. Boom, there we go. Look at that, we got one basic research. And up here, you can craft one basic research into a compressed research if you have eight of them. So eight logistics research equals one 8x logistics research. And then you can do the same again to get a 64x logistics research stack because uh, some of the research in here does require a lot of research. It requires a lot of these uh, logistics research. And so sometimes we are going to need quite a lot of them and it's gonna be easier if we have them uh, stacked up as opposed to having to hand in stacks and stacks of the uh, the individual item. This quest right here does say uh, bulk crafting because one researcher is never enough. And uh, that is clearly apparent here. You'll see this is working, but it is very slow. And so if we wanted to do this faster, we would put down many more of these burner researchers. And it looks like the next quest here wants us to get steel. I don't know if we can get steel without the blast furnace. And the blast furnace, I believe, is one of those items that we're going to have to research to unlock. It is, it's right here. So once we get 16 logistics research, we can unlock the ability to make steel. We unlock the blast furnace, and then we can also unlock upgrades to the blast furnace as we move forward. And so that is something that we're going to have to do sooner or later. As I mentioned before, I do want to look at getting into minecarts here. So for that, we also need 16. We need eight for the first set of minecarts, and then we need eight again to unlock the signals mod, which allows us to uh, kind of drastically change the way regular Minecraft and minecarts work. And so what I think we're going to want to do here is kind of just run around a bit, get all of our burners refueled, because I think some of them are gonna be a little light on fuel here. I do believe, by the way, that we can make yet more burners if we like, if we look up the recipe for the burner components. These are made with iron, copper, redstone, iron, and copper. So these are not too difficult. We can make even more of these to get more iron, copper, coal, and redstone even faster. But uh, let me quickly go and get yet more copper and yet more iron. We'll get all of that smelting and we'll see if we can't get enough to get us more research points. All right, so we've got the four logistics research that we just made and I have gone and refilled all of my burners and I brought back some of the uh, the ores and the redstone that we need. And I think we have what it takes here to make the remaining 12 logistics research to get some minecarts going. So if we craft three more copper gears, we can then get the 12 conveyor belts. And then if we take those 12 conveyor belts, we also of course do need the hammer. I've also tidied my inventory a little bit to make some space here. Let's get 12 iron plates like so. And we of course already have the 12 charcoal. And so if we just go ahead and throw all of these 
into here, that is going to slowly but surely make the remaining logistics research that we need. Of course, what we can also do here is we can throw in yet more iron and yet more redstone into these alloy kilns to get us more modularium. That's going to allow us to make even more of these burner researchers just to allow us to do that that little bit faster. And once we have all of that unlocked, we can then start looking at using minecarts both to move the resources closer from where they currently are, uh, because I think that the minecart tracks might be a cheaper way of moving things versus using the conveyor belts. Uh, they're also a bit more reliable as well. And on top of that, I'm fairly certain that we should be able to use the minecarts with chests to start to distribute things like coal between our different burner drills and to distribute things like iron and redstone between the alloy kilns and, of course, to distribute things like charcoal, iron plates, and conveyor belts to all of the different item inputs on our researchers. All right, so once we've got at least eight logistics research here, we can unlock the regular minecarts. All you have to do, click on this, click submit, and then that is unlocked. We get a uh, Transcart 1 game stage unlocked. Uh, minecarts are much faster than conveyor belts, but I can't exactly dump items into them very quickly. But with a bit more research, I should be able to overcome that problem. That is, of course, where Signals comes into play. And so now minecarts, of course, super easy to make. And then the rails, not called tracks, they're called rails, are also fairly easy. It's just iron and a stick, and we get 16 of those at a time, as opposed to just the four conveyor belts. And so if we were to grab some wood, craft some sticks, and do something like this, um, I think I did put, yeah, iron into two of these, because I kind of anticipated that we were going to need a lot of iron, and in fact, I might even put iron into this bottom furnace as well. We should probably just look at getting more furnaces in general to smelt things even faster. Uh, this is working, nice. And so, yeah, we should be able, of course, to take what we have over here. We are gonna have to change it up a little bit, I think, because of course, if we get, real quick, a minecart with chest, which, as the quest suggested, right now isn't that easy to fill because we can only use a hopper currently, which is fairly slow. What we should be able to do, though, is uh, craft a regular minecart, and then if we want to get a minecart with chest, we just, of course, craft it with a chest for that, we are going to need to get some kind of wood. I do think in the future there is a way for us to automatically grow wood, but of course this is the very first episode and so we don't quite have that technology unlocked just yet. But uh, let's grab a bunch of planks here and let's craft up yet another chest to get that minecart with chest made, like so. And then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get a regular Minecraft hopper, which again, shouldn't be too difficult. We do have a fair amount of iron and even more smelting up now, which is good. So we can hopper into the minecart with chest and we're gonna have to create, I think a little bit of a loop here. The way this is gonna have to work is we're gonna have to pull from this chest here that has the redstone and the diamonds in it and send it around. Thankfully, we can, I'm fairly certain, change these conveyor belts to go up vertically. So if I shift right click like that, that does indeed work. Okay, perfect. So what I can do is we can get rid of these here and we can kind of just move this up a little bit. I think what I might have to do for this is place down something underneath like this. And again, let's pick up this belt as well. What we should be able to do is something like this, something like this. And then if we move this chest up, again, the, the further forward we go with the conveyor belts here, it's just less we have to do with the uh, with the minecarts. Uh, in fact, actually, I think we're gonna need to make that go up one further, which is again, a shift right click like this. If we do that, what we should then be able to do, I think, is place down another belt here, move this chest up to here. And then from there, if we put a hopper beneath that and we have tracks beneath that, we should be able to start pumping items down from this chest into the minecart that passes it. Again, right now, this is not gonna be a particularly great setup, however, in the future, we can replace this hopper with a much more powerful uh, interface that's going to move items substantially faster. And so basically now what we need to do is just run this all the way down to our current base area, because currently we're just gonna use this as a way to uh, easily move the items towards where we are, so we'd have to keep running over here. Uh, but then eventually, probably in the next episode, we'll look at uh, using the signals mod to automatically start to distribute some of our items more easily amongst things like the burner researchers to really get some automation going. Of course, one thing that we don't currently have that we are going to need is some kind of powered rail to make this work. Thankfully, there is an alternate recipe for powered rail here that uses redstone 
and the copper that actually seems very doable for us. We'll make a few of those, and that's of course going to allow us to keep our train going really for as long as we like it, and hopefully indefinitely. And uh, basically all we're going to do is on this side, we're going to set up basically the same thing, but instead of having uh, a hopper going into the minecart with chest, we're going to have a hopper pulling out of the minecart with chest. Back over here again, we do have another eight logistics research, and so we can unlock the signals mod here, which gives a better control of the minecarts. Again, we'll probably get to that maybe later, but then again, there is a quest here that does give us this cart hopper, which is actually very useful. We can use that in place of the hopper we have over there, or we could use it on this side, actually. Uh, we probably actually do want to make a second one of these. Yeah, they're not too bad, actually. So you know what? Um, I was originally going to make a loop. We don't need to do that, actually, I don't think, uh, because, actually, this is where we can, we can start to use the signals mod. So let me quickly see if I can't make another cart hopper. This cart hopper is going to allow us to extract very quickly. So let me quickly finish off this little loop that we're going to do here. The loop is not the most efficient way of doing it. I'm aware of that, but we're going to replace this fairly soon with a better system once we get into signals. Okay, so the Twitch chat has uh, rectified my thinking here. I um, was not aware that uh, minecarts would just bounce off a wall, which shows just how little vanilla Minecraft knowledge I have on the rails. But what we should be able to do is something like this. Of course, we do have to give that a redstone signal. I will go ahead and uh, probably just craft up two levers to make this happen. But what we can do on this side is we can utilize this cart hopper to very quickly empty anything that is inside of the cart. So let me get yet another chest here and let's put that chest under here. So I'm gonna put the, uh, the cart hopper there and then I'm gonna put the chest beneath that. I think I can still access that, I can indeed, fantastic. Let's put this here and then in here, Cart hopper. So we can actually have this emit a redstone signal, which is what makes it so much nicer than using a regular hopper. Also, it's very fast. So we're gonna say, if the cart is empty, emit a redstone signal. And that's for the cart inventory. And so if I were to put our minecart with chest down like this, and we were to put in, let's say 38 iron, we could then give that a slight push. It's gonna go over here. It instantly emptied that out, by the way. So that was very quick to empty out the 38 iron there. Our cart is then gonna start making its way over. We could probably do with adding like an extra little powered rail somewhere along the line here, just to make it that little bit faster. But uh, it does look like it might get there either way. And then ideally we do the same thing on the other end here, because although this does work, you'll see we did get a little bit transported into the minecart. It's not particularly fast. And uh, of course, one thing we are going to need to do on this side is get yet another powered rail and put that here. And ideally, for now we'll leave that on, but ideally we are gonna replace this hopper with another cart hopper to make this substantially faster. This is working though. And so let's go and see if we can't make another cart hopper to kind of fully complete this little setup. And then uh, next time we can come back and make this uh, even more efficient. So if we want to make another cart hopper for that, we need a regular hopper, which we can go steal from the current setup. And we need a block signal. The block signal is stone smelted with redstone and then green dye. And I'm fairly certain if memory serves me right, that what we can do here is we can take some iron, make some shears, shear some grass, and then we can smelt that in this pack into green dye, which is very useful indeed. So if we do that, I will put a few more in here just in case we can actually smelt those. And that should be everything. While we wait for that to smelt, let me go and steal this other hopper and let's get that second cart hopper down. All right, boom, we got the hopper. We've got the cactus green. Let's see, can we make a block signal, we can indeed. One cool thing, by the way, of putting a chest next to the crafting station, if you go and shift click in a recipe, it will pull items from the chest here. For example, if I put the hopper and the block signals in here and uh, shift click, it will just pull them and put them in the crafting station, which is very helpful indeed. And so now, if we were to go and place this cart hopper where the old hopper was, because this can be used to both pull items out and pump items in. So we're gonna put this right about here, like that. And then the only trouble with the current setup is that if the cart is going too fast, it's probably not gonna stop here. There is the option to put a limiter rail from signals uh, that would slow down the cart before it got here to make sure it stopped. But a lot of the signals rails do require nether quartz and we don't quite have access to nether quartz just yet. We need a higher tier drill to make that happen. For the time being though, this looks like it is going to work. And so right here, we should see all of the items move into the minecart. It looks like the minecart is emptied and it also looks like we are out of fuel here. That's fine if we re-up that fuel and uh, just, for example, drop in 
all of this here. You'll see that it very, very quickly pulled all of those items down. Again, just to show that off, if I put a stack of redstone in there, it pulls it so fast down into the cart. And then this time we want to change this to not empty, but empty as soon as items stop transferring. So as soon as there's nothing to transfer, it's going to stop. It looks like we might have to move this. If I move this and I just put it here, will that work? There's only one way to find out, and that is to wait for our cart to come back, which shouldn't take too long. The cart is pretty fast. We could put, if we wanted to, more powered rails down, but I don't think it's strictly necessary, simply due to the fact that the redstone and the diamonds are not coming in that fast, for one. And for two, if we go too fast, there's a possibility that the cart kind of bounces off the wall and doesn't end up getting what it needs, and then the, the whole thing kind of falls apart, which is not necessarily what we're after. But for the time being, this completely works. It works exactly how I want it to work, and we can duplicate this setup fairly easily with the copper that we have uh, over there somewhere. I think it's just behind that tree there. And of course, with anything else that we want to uh, to bring back going forward as well. And if we want red star diamonds, we now just have to walk to here, as opposed to having to walk all the way over to that burner drill. And of course, we can then start to pull things like the redstone and the diamonds from here and using minecarts we can then send those to where they need to go we can look at getting some auto workbenches to automatically craft things like the copper gears and then we can look at auto crafting things like the conveyor belts which we can then use of course to automate the production of research and then as we move forward we can get more research we can unlock things like steel we can start making more advanced types of research and we can progress forward through this pack which i'm very much so looking forward to but for now unfortunately we are out of time for this episode of feed the factory.